We've got five wonder kids in today's experiment, and we're looking at the spectrum of finishing. We're going from one to 20 in intervals, and we're going to see who has the better career. Will there be a massive disparity in goals? Or is finishing overrated? Let's find out. Yes, here we go, gang. We are back for another experiment, and it's today. And today it's finishing, which is, I know what composure, I know off the ball, I know pace are all massive for forwards. But for me, I've got to have high finishing. If you've not got 16 plus on finishing, I'm not interested. Honestly, I'm not. And I've had forwards that have scored great, scored a lot of goals with less finishing. You've got inside forwards that have got like 11 finishing who seem to bang them in all the time. But just, if you've not got 16 and above, I'm just not interested. So here we go then. We have got five wonder and they have got different abilities in terms of finishing and long shots. All five Wonder Kids are mercenary personality. They've all got a very similar attribute breakdown. They are 150 current ability, 200 potential, but they are frozen at 150. The reason we've got 200 potential is because it does inspire some big money moves, and then when they don't do as well, they sort of move on. So it does add a little bit of drama in that capacity. But we've got Santiago Spanish, who's got 20 finishing and long shots, Pedro Portuguese at 15s, Francois French at 10s, Diederik Dutch at 5s, and Eddie English at 1s. They're all 15. As I mentioned, they've all got mercenary personalities. If we have a quick look, the attribute breakdown for the personality is identical, and it is this. 18 for adaptability, 20 for ambition, 1 for loyalty. Very important to have that sort of breakdown to get them to want to leave, to want to move on. We've got controversy at 15 as well. So they will uh, upset the apple cart, so to speak. And that's it. It's as simple as that. I mean, if we look at Eddie English, his breakdown's a, bit, a little bit different. He's got a few more greens in other areas because we had to make up the shortfall because of his finishing and long shots was considerably worse. If we do look at Santiago Spanish, for example, quite a different player to get the 150 current ability. So I think, personally, it's going to be very interesting to see how things pan out. So what we're going to do is we're just going to jump through one year to see where they all end up. Okay, so straight away off the bat, we can see Santiago's gone to Fiorentina. And he's wanted by Real Madrid. He scored 10 in 34 for Fiorentina in Serie A and he got 18 in 51 overall 7 in 15 in continental competitions Fiorentina then qualifying for the Europa League after finishing 12th well he only beat young boys on penalties and Santiago Spanish in extra time did score a penalty and he scored in the penalty shootout as well so he's got a trophy to his name straight off the bat winning the conference league for Fiorentina Santiago Spanish but with 20 finishing and 20 long shots I will say 10 in 34 a little disappointing so Pedro Portuguese then he's actually been retrained as an attacking midfield center has anybody else well Santiago hasn't we'll get on to the others in a minute Pedro is at Benfica where he got 20 in 34 8 in 12 in continental competitions 11 in 13 in the cup so 39 in 59 let me tell you that's a very good return a very good return indeed and Benfica won the league by a singular point Pedro level with Mediterimi for the golden boot only missed out on minutes per goal ratio. The 15s doing the business there. Francois at Napoli has 8 in 28. 22 of those were off the bench. He's obviously playing second fiddle to Victor Osserman. And he's been retrained as an attacking midfield centre. So he might not be playing up top as much. Diederik at PSG hasn't played a single minute. He has actually. Apologies. I thought he hadn't. He has played a, a lot. Six starts, seven goals, 26 appearances off the bench. 37 appearances off the bench overall, 13 goals, 9 starts. He did win the league as well, so there we go. Diederik has actually done alright. And Eddie English at Fulham, he got 11 in 31. Seven times he came off the bench and Fulham finished 16th. So they avoided relegation by three points. It was all very tight around the 40-point mark. There was a you know a couple of wins and you were borderline mid-table. Leicester, West Ham and Palace went down. West Ham going down, wow. So, very interesting in this first iteration there's going to be transfers there's going to be moves and what we're going to do is going to jump through three years now is everyone going to still be there or will they have moved on so Santiago is still at Fiorentina where he's scoring you know what he's starting to score a bit more he's not really coming off the bench much he's his first choice He's the first choice striker. He's not been retrained in a different position. Got three caps for Spain. No goals. Worth between 46 and 138 million pounds. No one seems to have come in for him yet. There we go. 
However, Pedro has moved for £55 million from Benfica, where he, you know what, his first season for Benfica was, was his best. 20 and 34, every other season, he's been, you know, a bit of a bit part player. To be perfectly honest, he made six appearances off the bench in that season, only scoring 10 in his 22 starts. And then he got seven in 21, but only 10 of those were starts. So not great. He's gone to Real Madrid for £55 million, where he started half of his games that he's played. Scoring eight goals. Uh, I don't know what to make of that. He's not amazing. But having said that, he's playing for Real Madrid at a 150 sort of current ability. He's never going to start every game, is he? Porto won the league for three years in a row. So the only time he won the league was the first season with Benfica. And Barcelona have taken the Spanish league by a singular point sorry by two points only losing the one game and that was against Real Madrid and yeah a very good a very competitive league between those two everyone else is way further back but look at that 93 and 95 points feel very aggrieved not to win the league at that Francois has moved to Napoli so Francois is still at Napoli and he is I would say very much still Victor Osserman's understudy if Victor Osserman is still there which he is Victor Osserman is still there and of course he is the main man but not scoring a lot of goals it has to be said he did win the league three years ago Fiorentina now getting up into the Europa League fo uh, Europa League football qualification you got Champions League football there they, they won the they won the Europa League did they no did they no they didn't no Lazio did Lazio won the Europa League they got Champions League football maybe a coefficient spot I don't know six teams getting Champions League football is massive in the season that Napoli won the league and of course he was there he's been there oh, sorry, that's Victor Osserman what am I doing and he was there he's been there for the entire save game and it was the second season and he made plenty of appearances so milestones he's there we go Serie A champions. They've also won the Italian Cup that season. He's got 17 in 23 for France. So 10 finishing and 10 long shots. He's actually got a very good goal scoring record for France. Far better than his record for Napoli. He's a substitute too much for Napoli. Diederik is asking to leave. He wants a new contract and he's on £66,000 a week. I think that's probably fair. I mean, he's at PSG, so he's he's chancing his arm really, isn't he? Because PSG are money bags. And he's just had his most prolific season to date. He's actually started more games as well. 15 starts, which is actually a, the, a similar... Um, yeah, he's only had 15 starts in the league in the previous three seasons. A lot more off the bench. So more starts has led to more goals. The PSG, fair play. And they won the league every single season. And Eddie English has moved from Fulham to Bournemouth. He moved for £27.5 million. Pounds. He... He got relegated with Fulham. His goal return's not terrible. His goal return's not terrible, except for Bournemouth. His goal return is pretty terrible. 5 in 34. Only once he came off the bench, though, and that's why. He's now a, re he's now a wing back. Playing wing back right. Or is he? Because there he is in the tactics of Bournemouth. We've ticked over, so we can't see. Let's go back at the schedule, then. I'm going to look... Oh, Bournemouth had a rough end to the season, didn't they? Look at that. Just look at that second half of the season. What, one, two, three, four wins. Did he play? Eddie English played. Okay. I'm looking here. Yeah, he's a striker. He's playing up front. So he's not playing as a wing back. Why has he been trained as a wing back? That's the that's the that's the biggest curveball we've had so far. No caps for England as well. So there we go. We're four years in, so we need to rattle through a little bit quicker than we are doing. But so far, we're looking and is anyone setting the world on fire? Francois has turned to jovial. How's his hidden attributes shouldn't change? His ambition's gone down. Hidden attributes shouldn't be changing because they're frozen. So he's gone to jovial. Anyway, right, let's get to 2030 in four more years. So Santiago has moved from Fiorentina to Liverpool for £93 million, where he was doing very good for Fiorentina, actually. His most recent season, his last season for Fiorentina, 23-37 and 37 in... Well, well, we'll get to that in a minute. But Fiorentina did not win a league. Napoli have been winning the league. Um, he's gone to Liverpool, though. He got 17... Sorry, five goals in 17 appearances, but he only made one start. Man City won the league. So Santiago, by the time we come back, he'll be gone from Liverpool because he won't be playing enough. He's not a regular starter. He's not He's not anything, is he? 3-11 for Spain. Pedro Portuguese is wanted by Manchester United. Still at Real Madrid. He's playing a bit part. He's a squad option. 
isn't he? He's making plenty of appearances off the bench, plenty of starts. Uh, this was his worst season in terms of starts, only seven, and he got six goals. So he's not setting the world on fire. Real San Sebastian won the league three years ago. Didn't expect that. And they're down there in 15th. So how the mighty have fallen. Real Madrid, in the most recent season, though, have won the league on 103 points with only one defeat. That was to Athletic Bilbao. Hendricks there and looking like a superstar. He is also wanted by Chelsea and Liverpool. Francois still at Napoli and he's won the league a few times. He's not starting at all really is he he's, he's making a few starts most of the time he's coming off the bench this most recent season sorry 25 starts seven off the bench and he got 12 goals um a bit disappointing what changed in this most recent season Poch is in charge Victor Osterman's still there Moise Keane's there so I'm not sure why Victor Osterman's now playing on the left Francois up top but plenty of league wins for Napoli so he's, he's winning the league quite a bit fair play not scoring enough goals for me though Diederik has gone to Manchester United wow 133 million pounds they paid for him from PSG. Again, a, a, a squad option. Starting more than he's coming off the bench. Last couple of seasons, it was a bit less. And to be honest, he, he moved in January. He went to United. Only made nine appearances, all of them off the bench. Won the league every time with PSG. Hasn't done anything with Manchester United. But we know that because we checked the Premier League with Liverpool. Of course we did. And Eddie English is still at Bournemouth. He's wanted by Tottenham Hotspur. And... Bournemouth have stayed in the league and he's scoring a goal every other game. He's, you know, for one finishing and one long shot, he's not had a terrible return. Although his most recent season, he only played and he started half of his games. The other half was substitute appearances. And that is a bit of a change from where he's been at with Bournemouth so far. So will he move on going forward? In terms of internationally, Diederik is absolutely rocking it out for Holland, uh, 66 caps, 36 goals. Francois has got 55 caps for France as well. Pedro, Santiago and Eddie have only ever really been bit part players. They've been in the squad. They've probably come off the bench a few times. I don't know if they have ever will have made many starts. I mean, Eddie's got four and seven for England, which is actually a great record considering where he's at Bournemouth with, with, with no ability to finish. So, yeah, very interesting. All right, well, we're in 2030 and things are starting to take shape and there's no real di di discerning... Uh, statistic that is saying this finishing is optimal because they're all having a very bit part sort of career in terms of goals with goal return um i mean francois probably having the best career so far best goal scoring record internationally won the most trophies with napoli and he's he's straight down the middle so he's, he's a balanced sort of person anyway so the, we'll go five years to 2035 now surely there's going to be some moves okay so santiago has gone to al duhal du, al duhal £12.25 million. Pounds. Liverpool. Let's have a look then. What happened here? He went to Liverpool for £93 million pounds from Fiorentina, where he was a substitute for basically his entire Liverpool career. He then did not play a single minute in the league for them in the 2032-33 season. He then went on loan to Khan, where he got 7 in 26. They were starts as well. So he didn't do very well at Khan. Despite having 20 finishing and 20 long shots, you would expect him to score more than 7 in 26. He has now gone to Alder Hale in Qatar, probably playing in a league that's not... I mean, 150 is probably one of the best players in that division. And Hernan Crespo's in charge. Weird one. This is the team that they've got. So yeah, 150 is their best player. Off the grade out anyway. But he's got 26 in 27, but the league is not loaded. So that is much of a muchness. So Santiago has left the building in terms of playable leagues. Pedro has moved to Monaco for £34.5 million from Real Madrid. Real Madrid let him go for £21 million or £20.5 million less than they paid for him. And uh, the last couple of... So the last season, he got only two starts. 17 appearances off the bench he fell out of favor and monaco came in and said yes please we'll have you where he has started pretty much all of his games he's only made about two or three substitute appearances per season his goal return isn't too bad 24 and 31 there that is absolutely brilliant 14 and 33 is a little bit worse well obviously we know it's a little bit worse but probably a bit below where you'd want 16 and 27 with three of them off the bench. I'd say that's probably about par. It's not too bad. He hasn't managed to win the league. It's been PSG all the way through. Francois is wanted by Inter Milan. Feels it is time to move on for a new challenge. His transfer list by request for £39.5 million. Wants to move on for a new challenge. He's been at Napoli 
for the entire experiment so far 13 years where he's got 101 goals in 357 appearances i'll be honest with you he's not doing great he's he's coming off the bench too much for my liking he's not doing fantastically well at all maybe 150 was a bit low for the players his, his career at napoli despite the fact that napoli have won the league what Four times in the experiment, they've come and run up a few times, but four times in the experiment, not in any recent years. He's not doing fantastic. He's wanted by Inter. Will he leave? Remains to be seen. Diederik, though, left Man United for £43 million. Pounds. Oh, that's a very Man United transfer, isn't it? £133 million pounds spent, sold for 37.5, nearly £100 million pound loss. They'd never even bloody played him. He's made two starts. Two starts. Arsenal paid £37.5 million, pounds and he's, oh, he's only made three starts a season for the last two and he made 10 in his first season with them Diederik's not having a great time club wise I wish you could click this just to see how many appearances have been substitute overall Eddie's still at Bournemouth still at Bournemouth and he's becoming probably a little bit of a club legend is he playing up front well actually here 23 um appearances off the bench only scoring two goals that's rubbish 28 starts five goals surely he's not playing up front there in this season 11 in 24 starts nine off the bench Went down, went to the championship. Didn't really start that much. Only six starts. He's come back up. He didn't really start that much in the championship. They've come back to the Premier League and he's now played every game. I'm just very confused by that. Hendricks moved to Chelsea. £179 million. And bloody hell. He's all right, isn't he? In the, that last season, looking at the Premier League, Leicester City bloody came back and won it. Leicester City. who finished ninth there. They won the Premier League, performing a miracle once again. Although they did get Champions League football by finishing 7th. They must have won something. They won the Europa League twice in this experiment. Mikel Arteta is in charge. Been there just for, just for just for a year. Well, well, well. Another five years then. Let's go to 33. See how see where people have moved on to from there. Santiago is still at Al Duhail, where he's yeah, I mean, it's much for much as he's absolutely ripping it up in Qatar. Congratulations, Santiago. Moving on. Uh Pedro Portuguese is joining Troyes in 2040 on a free transfer. He's actually at Man United, so he, he's left Monaco on a free. Oh. He went to United for one year. He's been at United for a season where he's played. He's been started 34 times. At the age of 30 bloody three, Manchester United said, yes, please. Marcus Rashford's the manager. Arda Goula's at Man United as well. Francois is at Ren. He moved from Napoli for free. So no one came in for him for £39 million. So he stayed at Napoli for another couple of years. Fell massively out of favour. Only made a couple of starts. Went to Ren. Four starts in that season with, with 12 goals. 22 of those off the bench, though. Uh, and then 90. 19 starts, 10 off the bench, and 20 goals in that season for Ren. So they did very, very well. Unfortunately, he's been at Ren for two seasons. Oh, so he left Napoli, went to Ren on a free, and then for two years, they've not won it because he's been there. Bonsoir. Diederik is at Juventus, and he's joining Bournemouth. Right. He, he, he's moved about, and he old Diederik. £17 million pound from Arsenal. Let's have a look then. We've been at Arsenal for a couple of years last time we were here, I think. Is that right? Um, th Three starts, 13 off the bench. Then we've got 12 starts, 13 off the bench. 13 and 25 overall but like I say only 12 of those starts that's not too bad not too bad to be fair the following season he only made one start three off the bench I was just looking then to see if he'd moved at the start of the season he did not went to Juve the following year 2037-38 one start 10 off the bench then 38-39 just six appearances off the bench and then the following year four appearances off the bench so he's not really played any football in the last like five years he's had a bit of a torrid time of it overall and Eddie 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 left Bournemouth for 15.5 million pounds that must have been at the start of the season three starts three off the bench or did he move in January quite possibly moved in January Leicester bought him for 15.5 million pounds he brought him off the bench twice and the following season he came off the bench at the start of the season I assume and went on loan to Southampton where Southampton started him three times he came off the bench 19 times and that was enough for them to say yes we'll pay 35 and a half million pounds for him that being said since he's been there at Southampton and been a fully fledged Southampton player he has played over 30 started 28 32 and 32 games coming off the bench four times in each season as well so over 30 appearances a season and 17 17 14 not a terrible return for Southampton who are mid-table as you as you, you know a, a goal every other game for a mid-table team in the Premier League is pretty good going if you ask me 
So he's actually not done too bad, despite having one finishing and one long shot. The question is, is who's done the best? The, the stats are going to be very swift now because it's going to be... Francois is now spirited. I don't know what's happening with Francois. He's got more personality changes than anything. Santiago has gone to Alda Hale, so we can't really look at goals per game ratio because he's absolutely ripped it up in uh, Qatar for the last few years and it's really swifty stats. He's starting every game. He's got like 30 and 26 there. So yeah. That, uh, uh, anyway, right. We're going to move to the end of the careers. I mean, the 33. So let's go three years, see if they're all still there. 2043. Right, two of them have gone. So Santiago went to Al Shabab. So he moved for 1.8 million pounds from Wolves again to Saudi Arabia this time. So he came back from Qatar for free, went to Wolves, got 10 in 37, got relegated and then got two in six before moving to Al Shabab. Diederik is still going at Bournemouth. He moved from he moved from Juve to Bournemouth on the free. We saw that was going to go through, didn't we? Yeah, we saw that was going to go through. He's starting a lot. Not scoring loads, but not too bad. Uh, Francois is still at Rennes and he's not done amazing, has he? Although they have won the league a couple more times. So he's got some French leagues to his name. There's a bit of a sub-merchant squad option. Go back a year just to see the other two. Right, so Pedro's retiring and he's here at Troyes. Twa? Twa? He moved for free from United. He don't there. Only there a season. He got never started. Never started again. Bloody hell. Uh, Francois still there. Diederik at Bournemouth. We saw Eddie at Southampton. Did he retire from here? I think he must have done. Yeah. He's again not too bad. Yeah, playing quite a lot. So fair play, Eddie. As you saw, Santiago at Al Shabab. He moved there from Wolves. Yeah, he's still there the following season. Okay, so there we go then. Um let's have a quick look at this. I'm gonna move out of the way. Let's have a quick look at each player's goal tally, just to see. 211 for Pedro in 491. 150 53 and 487 for Francois. Diederic 152 and 450. Eddie got 214 in 638. So we played a lot more. We did get a lot more goals. So and Santiago, I mean this one's going to be swift. 295 in 542. I'd say it's largely inconclusive. Largely inconclusive. Eddie never really got capped for England. Santiago didn't really get capped for Spain. Diederic played a lot for Holland. Francois quite a bit for Fran uh, France. And Pedro a lot for Portugal. But the disparity between the players, between the ones and the twenties, there's not enough to make me go that is just such a crucial attribute because at 150 they've been they've been good players we're off the bench a lot not superstars as anyone won football of the year i'd be bloody surprised if they had but we'll have a quick look while we're here i mean no it's been the erling Haaland, and killing mbappe show Hendrix popped in nicholas koopman whoever this guy is i mean nicholas koopman hello he's a bit of a player isn't he 98 million pound from dortmund and worth every single penny of it bloody hell no wonder he's won the uh, player of the year a couple of times and if we have a quick look golden ball again Again, nothing. Saka won it a few times. Mbappe just went on a tear for, what, seven years? World Player of the Year, again, not nothing happened. Hammervinger at City, Gravenberch at Barca, Hendrik at Chelsea. But yeah, nothing's happened in that sort of regard. Has anyone won an international tournament? That is the question. Gio Van Bronckhorst is in charge of England. Ralph was never there. So in terms of the Euros, we had two for France, one for England, one for Germany, and one for Belgium. Beating beat Scotland in the final. France beating Poland in the final as well. Unusual. There was the World Cup we've had England and three for Italy one for Brazil we've not got an Italian we've not got an Italian in our midst Francois then has he won anything for France he won the Euros in 2024 and again in 2028 third place in the Olympics in 2036 he was their over 23 player and yeah two Liga championships with Ben and he won a lot of Serie A with Napoli so in terms of individual success Francois has done it he's done all right in terms of internationally winning a couple of Euros 43 and 73 is not a bad record they've thrown psg at the top of liga so i'm not no no small feat that and then won quite a few with napoli didn't set the world on fire but none of them did uh, so as it stands was finishing that important no oh, you know, might run this back in a different sort of capacity i tell you what give me some ideas of what you think we should do to tweak this to try and get a bit more of a i don't know um better better reading is it higher accountability is it lock them at clubs I, I, I don't know i've not got the answers at this moment of time i'll have to have a think but if you've got any ideas like i say comments down below if you enjoyed it like the video subscribe to the channel and yeah let me know what you thought about this in general or any other ideas and uh, not, not just pertaining to this any ideas at all in the comments always welcome them always try and reply to your comments thank you very much for watching yeah take care of yourselves gang i'll see you soon